Hi Stephen, um, okay. good afternoon to you. It's looking really good that Ireland will be co-host at the Euros in 2028. How excited are you about that? Excited about that. Well, um, yeah, I think it's good news overall. I think it's it's positive to have the the European Championships in in Ireland, and um, you know that's certainly that is, that is a good news story, and and uh, I'm sure I'm sure the Irish supporters will. will We'll look forward to having a lot of games in this country, and uh, you know, and that's that's to look forward to. And it's quite a distance away now, but I'm sure that they will look forward to when it happens. There are some who are saying that Ireland need to deal with other things that are more important, grassroots and League of Ireland, and, and maybe they get distracted by sort of hosting this competition. What would you say to those skeptics? No, it's not, not skeptics. That's it's a point of view which I respect. I think. Uh, I don't necessarily think they're conflicting. I would say that um, the infrastructure in football in this country is nowhere near the level that needs to be, and you know needs serious government investment. And I think the Taoiseach has acknowledged that and, and said publicly that he wants to invest in academies in Ireland. And uh, you know I know that there is programs for clubs to try and increase the infrastructure because we're way behind your, the rest of Europe in relation to stadium facilities. You know, we're way behind. You know, in this country, and I think that's we know that. But I don't see that necessarily as been conflicting with hosting Euro twenty eight. Uh, you know, they're they're two they're they're two. Uh, you know, I I don't see that. I think government funding for infrastructure and maybe like ultimately the Euro twenty eight is a money generator, isn't it, for the economy. I'm not. I don't know what's involved in the finance. I actually have no idea what's costing, or how much it is. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Um, but certainly, uh, so I'm not qualified to speak in in, in regard to the, the exact figures involved. But um, personally, I don't see it as a negative, and I think it's good. People want to see, uh, you know, a major tournament and be part of big events like that and fill it and. I think uh, Ireland wants to be part of that as well, and we want to be. We'd like, ideally, we want to be there, uh, you know, when it comes around, and that's that's what you'd, you'd hope for. Tony, Stephen, a key area of the FAI strategy was about improving facilities and, and infrastructures, and um, and the FAI, as we know, is cash strapped. So there's a, a limited amount of resources, financial, and a limited amount of resources in terms of personnel. Do you not see that this might take the eye off the ball, so to speak? Yeah, like, being honest, I'm not sure where the money is coming from, whether it comes from FAI coffers or whether it comes from various uh, government departments and so forth. So I'm not certain of that. So I'm not, I don't have the details of that, nor have I had any discussions about that, you know. So I cannot, cannot be certain about that. But ultimately, I, I don't see having a Euro 28 um it essentially would be in Dublin obviously the Aviva or, or Crow Park and Portsmouth nowhere else in Ireland but in you know in it essentially be in Dublin but I don't necessarily see it as conflicting I think it's uh, I think it'd be a positive to have um I'm not a spokesman for this you know I I, I don't even really consider it at length I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking for it. you just ask me an opinion okay and I'm not I'm not at all involved in it in any shape or form, but I think um, uh, if, you're, if you're asking me opinion, and I'm not aware of the exact financial details, uh, but I don't see it as being in conflict. Uh, I see it as the Euro 28 as an opportunity to have big, uh, big events in Ireland, big, big football events. We as Ireland we want to be part of that, and that would be special for the country if we were, and in, in a situation like that. Um, because the previous ones would have been COVID and empty stadiums and all that, so going forward, it would be it would be special to have that in the country. Um, how we divide the finance, I haven't I got I haven't got the specifics on that. So I don't know. You know, I think the upgrading of infrastructure is a different argument. I think. And but look at this possible situation. If Euro's expansion to thirty two, likely the Crow Park will be required, and then a lot of money will have to go to upgrading the Crow Park facilities to reach away from standards. So you'll see money going into improving Crow Park 
for a football tournament? Yeah, no, it's a valid point. You know, I think that you know that is valid. Uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, going to argue against that. You know, I do, I don't know how much is involved in that. What money goes to Crow Park or where it comes from and so forth. Um, you know, I've not. It's not something that I've been focusing on in any great detail. But I do think. Uh, um, I think the, the experience for, for for Irish football, the Irish football public, they would enjoy it. It'd be a big event, and they want to be a part of it. And, and certainly, but that's not. It is years away, and I, do I want all the resources to be focused on that, and and away from all the other aspects of football? Learning? No, I don't. Of course not. That's not the. That's not the question. The, the, can they can they coexist? Can we continue to grow football at all levels in the country, and the league, and and and, and still have the Euro twenty eight as a separate entity and something to look forward to, in in you know many years time, um, possibly. But you know that's. Uh, that's the way I'd see it. Can I just ask you, you, you just signed a new contract, but to be involved still as the manager, would you like to remain involved and have the Euros? You talked about having the Euros in Germany and how big a yeah. that would be, but to be involved to manage your country in a finals in your country. Yeah, it's a, it's a considerable distance away and I've got to be focusing on the 28th of March, first and foremost, I think. I think that's, uh, no, I think uh, the games next week against Belgium and Lithuania, our, our special games but that's that's in the distance and I'm not going to make big statements about that you know now at the moment but it, I think it's a good thing for football in the country and um, yeah but my my job now is to prepare the team for the for the Nations League coming up and for the European Championship qualifiers and to get get into Euro 24 and of course you know if we achieve that then you can look forward after that but I think at the moment that's my, my main focus that's one for me would you as a football man prefer a 32 team competition which is over half the, uh, the people uh, the countries trying to participate or a 24 because people do say there's a dilution of quality the more countries get into the finals right right um, you know I, I think I'm going to uh I'm going to go with the obvious, prob probably, you know, because it suits us, because qualifying for tournaments, it's 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 um, it's never easy for a, for a country our size. And I think, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not against, certainly not, it would be foolish for me to be against uh, a 32 team competition. Um, the fact that a couple of extra or extra group games, you know, would have to be played wouldn't dilute the overall quality of the quarterfinals, semi-finals, or finals. You know, I wouldn't see that. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I, I would have no problem with that. Thank you. Gary, yeah, just uh, this is your only get together these two games before the Nations League. So, how much do you think, particularly as a player number one in the world? How much do you think you can use them to experiment either in formation or with different players? Yeah, well, we've got to look at, because we've got... The, the picture was that we got four games in 10 days in June in the Nations League. So that's... that's um, Obviously, we're to play, play the Ukraine, um, Armenia, Scotland and, and Ukraine, Ukraine again. That was originally the idea. We're not certain, you know, that would have been a big ask for the squad and we would have needed more than certainly more than 11 players we would need a full squad to participate in that kind of schedule uh, which was arduous travel we're not sure now what the situation is in June will we play Armenia twice has been su suggested um, it's a game with Scotland and and, what, um, and so forth obviously uh, the Ukraine game has been uh, you know we hope that Ukraine can go ahead with their World Cup qualifier against Scotland. We don't know this, of course, and it's, it looks unlikely now at the moment, even, uh, you know, to be honest. So, um, and, you know, our thoughts are with, with you know, with the Ukrainians this time, because obviously the quality team, they got to the quarters of the, the you know, the European Championships. But certainly, uh, um, so yeah, there would be changes between, um, between the two games, between Saturday and, and, and Tuesday, there will be some changes, but that would be expected. The last what question in the live section, we just need to wrap up the live section very soon. Just last question, please. Have you any injuries for this game? Yeah, yeah uh, Daryl Lenehan uh, reported, uh, obviously, in on 
with some groin pain and groin uh, he reported in off uh, in from Blackburn and so we had a scan in Kappa Hospital there and uh, he's uh, so we we had to send him home so he has a, a tear in his groin uh, from the game on from his game and so he hadn't trained with us that's from the game on Saturday uh, so we've had to send him home um, at the moment mm. and just on the Belgian selection you bit disappointed that they're not taking their front liners I know you wanted it like a tier one I, 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 I think that the players we're missing you know probably have a greater effect on the, the players they're missing you know we're missing Adam Eda Andrew Amabamadeli and the Stevens who are front line players for us Calum O'Dowd is obviously missing so all of their players are from top top teams in the European leagues like Lukaku's not fit so the choice of Batshuayi or Igi or Benteke as, as their first no, number nine and only one of them will play do you know what I mean so and they've got that right throughout the team uh, Boyata would come in at the back but it's not a young player he's 31 like and and uh, Jason Denier so those players have come in they've already played in work you know in, in, in major tournaments so um, okay Kevin De Bruyne's world class player enjoy to watch and be great for uh, everyone to, the Irish public to see him because he is a is a, is a real special talent um, but certainly um, um, they have a formidable team they're the world number one team and a formidable strength and depth and uh, we're aware of that and, and, and we don't we, we are, we've we emerging players so the players that we're missing have an equal effect of the players they're missing to their team they're missing from our team they're only missing you know they're missing who they're missing but I think they, they have a they have a formidable team Belgium and the world number one because they've been so consistent winning matches uh, you know relentlessly so uh, so that's, that's the way I see it and you still come in you just tell us about the process that I came about yeah, just um, obviously myself and, and Keith Andrews is um, my assistant manager who's done an amazing job and obviously he's given up all his media commitments now, he's focused, signed a contract, focused fully on and we work out all, all year round, you know, we, we obviously had it, uh, the previous coach Anthony come in on just on Windows and John will be just doing the same, just coming in on the Windows and so Keith, Keith Andrews is my assistant manager and has done a brilliant job and uh, he's been absolutely excellent behind the scenes and is a really, really, really talented coach. I'm delighted to have him. John has come in. It's just someone that I know from going, I've met, bumped into going to matches and particularly, obviously, a lot met him a lot at West Brom because uh, he lives in Birmingham, obviously, and uh, uh, West Brom is a, is a place I spend a bit of time in because, obviously, we've got Jason, Malumby, Darrow Shea, Callum Robinson playing there and various other players who are visiting teams and we'd often meet there and, and have cups of tea and chat and over the last year and uh, built up a relationship with him and um, obviously seeing the coach and, uh, at QPR and he's done well and so you know that it just it just it just seemed uh, obviously when I was working out who I'd bring in to replace him to replace Anthony at that time um, I felt he'd be a good candidate. Sorry. So that's the only way you knew him just by talking into him there was no, no, no one recommended him to you or anything like that it was just your own relationship with him. Yeah, my own relationship would be the main reason. Obviously, uh, and he's a good coach. Reputation's a good coach. I've dealings with him through QPR as well, uh, on a professional level. So, um, certainly, he's a, he's a good coach. He's an ex he's an excellent addition to the team. He's a highly regarded coach, and uh, he'd be a very good addition to the team. So, Stephen, yeah, just uh, just finish on that one. Have you been to QPR to see him at work? Have you seen him? Actually, with his players and how he, how he works with players before, uh, before he got the, the, the nod here? No, I haven't. Right. Okay, just in terms of uh, yesterday, we were speaking to Troy uh, Carr, and he really approved, he really came across a, a more mature version of himself. He seems to really. Important. Just to go back to your other question, I have watched, I've watched, yeah. I've watched videos of all the sessions. Okay, cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've, watched, I've watched them all at length. And, and studied studied his culture and soil and and all that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So just on, on Troy then, um, what have you seen since the last window? Obviously, you've been seeing more of in England, a bit more. Uh, have you seen a development in this game and how he's improved uh, since since the last window and since even since uh, 
recent ones. Troy yeah, yeah, yeah. Troy is. Um, he's had to sacrifice himself for the team a little bit at MK Dons. They, they, um, he's had to play in a variety of positions, and um, it's one thing that he obviously had a little period where he lost his place, and he'd had. COVID, COVID actually, and and he got sent off when he came back off COVID in a in a in a cup game, and um, so he lost his place for a little period, a little, little bit of a period for him, where you're thinking, right, he's got a job to do to get, make sure he stays in the international team now in the squad, um, because this is a little period for him, a little test for him, but he um, he knuckled down and I think he did about six consecutive matches or something where he played the full 90 minutes of every match even though the manager was making three substitutions in the attacking areas he was the, ne- he was the one never taken off so they're on a good run they're obviously toured in the League 1 and they're going well he's still a young player you know he's still a very young player he's done well and he's not he's not probably scored the amount of goals that he would have liked him to score but he's doing he's sacrificed he's got two last week but he, against Cheltenham but he certainly sacrificed himself to the team putting in Tremendous work and and uh, been a real, a great teammate to his to his players. Do you have any um, uh, mentoring sessions with him almost over the months? Uh, have you spoken to him about you know his role and, and his his development? I suppose. Yeah, yeah, of course. We're in regular contact with him, and um, um, and obviously I've been to the games and met him after games and so forth. And uh, so that's that's. Uh, but he. Um, no, nobody deserves credit only himself really for knuckling down and realising that you know um, the amount of work that he had to do to get himself right um, you know so I think uh, I think he's going he's, he's gonna to improve from here I think he'll only get better he mentioned just uh, he mentioned that his, his uh, the importance of training now and he's realised the importance of, of training well to play well the weekends is that a big part of your of your own philosophy yeah I don't think there's anything air chattering in that I think most people would feel that you know the kind of I think the, the importance of training well to play well and I think that's uh, you bring your form and training into into the games and that's that's um, yeah there's no there's no it's not a big secret that I think that's it's always been the way and I think uh, but it, it is important and we mustn't forget it you know it is a very important uh added you know you must train well all the time and, and bring your training you replicate the match situations in training that's what you're trying to do you're trying to create sessions on the training ground that rep, as a coach that replicates the you know, match environment and the players want to have situations where they can uh, you know where they can they find themselves in those similar situations in training as they do on match days and then if you're finishing well in, in training or you're playing well or you know things that you're doing well in training can can all manifest themselves in the games. Dan, Steve, just check has anyone been called in to replace Darren? I haven't called anyone at the moment. I just we're just considering that at the moment. Is it, would, like, would Jimmy Dunn, someone would come into the talks? There's a few. few John, like, John Eustace obviously there now for. But that that well that wouldn't be relevant. But yeah. certainly, uh, uh, yeah, Jimmy Jimmy's on stand. Jimmy has been on standby, all right. Yeah. And uh, it was in the in the provisional squad, so we'll we'll have to we'll have to see that. Could I just ask you, you said at the, the contract announcement that maybe there might be sort of less experimentation going forward. So can we take from that maybe with regard to this week, we'll be seeing for a friendly game something still closer to maybe your your stronger side available. If you know what I mean, as opposed to a yeah, th- there is an element of competition. So you know. The strongest side available, but yeah, for certain, but there will be changes between the two games, and that's that, there will be uh, because we need that for June. You know, we're not in a situation where we just play both same 11s and you're missing a couple of players, uh, a couple of players are injured coming into June, and then you, you're having to, particularly if we have four games, you don't know if we will, but if we had four games, I have to still plan like that, like you know, at the moment that, um, that we have at least three uh, qualifiers, so we will need uh. You know, we will need, can't just rely on 11. You know, we need, we do need the bit of competition uh, in that regard. Martin? Hey, Stephen. Do you see John Eustace as a kind of similar kind of coach to Anthony Barry? Is he, how would you compare the two? Uh, right, um, I, think, I think John's had probably more, much more experience because he's been assistant manager for four, four years at the Championship Club. 
Um, so I would say I would say that I think Anthony's Anthony's a very good coach. Did a great job with us. Um, John, likewise, sometimes part of the part of the job is also if you could be doing different patterns in training, coming and there might be the second eleven might be in a different pattern, and his job, your job might be to handle that second eleven who mightn't be playing. So he has experience managing senior pros at a, at a club over that period of time, and that's that that kind of experiences can be can be important as well when if. If I, you know, if I'm, I'm focusing on the, the first eleven and, and, and the second eleven. If that is, if there is a pattern, if you're doing that, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But that's one thing. But I think he's a good. Um, I think he's a student of the game. He thinks about the game. I know he's he. Uh, you know, we did a, quite a few video sessions together, and um, before um, before he came on board, and we just interacted in relation to how they train, what his ideas are, how he feels about. You know, are they. You know, do we do do we connect on that level, and um, and you know, thought provoking and challenging some concepts, and so it's interesting. And um, so yeah, I feel um, I feel that uh, I think he seems a really good person as well. What I'm saying, and you know, he bring a humility to the group as well. And so uh, I think he would do a good job. Yeah, I mean, it's been said. QPR play a similar way to Ireland. Is that the way? Is that too simplistic? Uh, um, yeah, it probably it probably is because they 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 are flexibility in the system. They do play three five two a bit, and they do sometimes play four three four two one. But yeah, the systems are not not dissimilar. Yeah, they are not too dissimilar overall. Nice. Okay, and then Philip. When you last won the league in 2018, that night you were talking about Irish players and talking about what you said. But you influenced by England and that all the English coaches apart from Eddie Howe were also. I don't. I, I didn't say that absolute quote, by the way. I didn't say the about the Eddie, all quotes Eddie, Eddie Howe. Yeah, no, um, in your interpretation of that. Not there. Mm. No, I'm just wondering what, what, what I mean, the Howe quote was. What do you see in John compared to what? Compared to when the top coaches in England were also. No, no, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not discussing that. That's I didn't, I didn't say that in that in that manner. No, no, no that's your opinion. Philip. Sorry, Sorry. Uh, Stephen. Thanks. Um, just two points to make. We had Jodie O'Grady in just a few minutes ago. Breath of fresh air, a really nice, like, nice guy, lovely personality. Um, what role do you see in having Bernard going forward? Not just the nation's the European Championships. Can you see having a really big impact going forward? And is the best of him still to come? Yeah, he, ha- he has been a breath of fresh air. In in um, you know, he's been a breath of fresh air since he's come into the team, and he's made an impact. And you know, we mustn't we mustn't put too much expectation on him because. At club level, uh, it's it's known that he hasn't scored that many goals for Rodham in that period. Um, but sometimes in this year, for example, in League One, he's mainly you know he played forty three in the fourth year they got promoted. He played forty three on the right wing. He did very well, and um, then he spent most of the year in the Championship injured, so he missed that most of that year. And nearly missed the full year. So he came back this year. They changed to three four. Three five two really, and he's playing um, right wing back for them. So, um, but he's not a defender, you know. He's not he's never not not a defender at all. So we we see him. Obviously, we need pace in the forward areas. That's what we sort of need. That I think it's important to have pace in the forward areas. In your if you front three, and he 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 has given us that outlet. And we don't play, even though we play three four two one. So we're not playing with two two exact tens. We don't play with equal symmetry, like with two tens and and a centre forward, looking across the line in in the same line. Like, you know, the player whoever's playing on the left, for example, Jamie McGrath or say Jason Knight, they're they're maybe operating off the left and drifting in and, and overloading in the midfield and Craig. But he all the time he's giving us a threat in behind, and we need that threat. Uh, to be 
to create problems for the opposition and that's what defenders don't like marking against pace and traditionally not got loads of quick players we have a few but Chidozi's given us that but he's shown a lot of um, intelligence as well with his movement he's linked very well with Matt Doherty with a lot of clips of him and Matt Doherty linking very well together and not being you know um, you know down that right side they, they, they have linked very well together and um, the fact that he's got two goals already uh, is, is a good return for him you know and um, but he, he he causes problems and you know ends up getting getting fouled a lot getting a lot of free kicks because he's a direct runner and um, you know I think yeah so that's that's what I think just, just to follow up in the, in the nation's league you touched on it once twice there I know the Ukraine situation is very uncertain but in your own mind is, is it looking like Armenia home and away in June and, and Scotland you have three of the games to be played is that can you give us any sort of indication of that? yeah again I'm not getting any clear answers you're not going to ask those questions people don't know you're not going to because it's still early um, so I'm not getting clear answers, but um, you'd have to say it's a possibility. You know, it's a possibility at this stage. Oh, we've been, we've been prepared to do it. Like so, it's well, you know we're due to go. We're play, we're going out there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it just means we're playing one of the games at home. We'd replace place one of the games at home. Before, Ukraine and go. Mm. I don't know, but uh, you know whatever it is. You know we, we take it on, and certainly, um, um, you know that, will, that 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 could happen. But I've no, you know, I'm, I'm not party to the discussions with uh, UEFA or whatever. You know, so we'll have to see. Okay.